At some point in life, we all break. It doesn't matter who you are or how big or small the trauma you face is, everyone goes through it. For me at least, one of the main reasons discussing anime is valuable is to help me understand how to deal with the toughest moments that my life may have thrown at me. A series that most certainly tackles what happens when we break is Land of the Lustrous. Land of the Lustrous is the story of gem people. Here there are immortal gem beings who have to fight off other beings from the moon that attempt to take them away. Each gem is named after real gemstones, and the inherent qualities of the real life stones influence the personalities of these gems. The start of the story can be a little daunting, as you are immediately thrown into a world that seems familiar but simultaneously is unknown. Questions immediately fill your head. How are these gems living? What planet is this? Who are the moon people, and why are they so interested in gems? And of course, why does their master seem different than them? All of these questions are at the front of the narrative, but are only revealed slowly as the story progresses. Instead, we follow the weakest and youngest gem alive, foes. Foes wanted to be helpful to their master, and truly wants to fight on the battlefield. Foss is tasked with creating a history encyclopedia, and this is the main focus for the first handful of chapters. We get to see foes roaming around trying to understand what the world is, and in return, that is exactly what the readers are doing. There is so little explained to us right away that we immediately grasp onto the goal of foes. Foss has another goal outside of creating an encyclopedia, and that is to find a new job for Cinnabar. Cinnabar has poison or mercury coming out of her body at all times, which means that they are very difficult to be around, especially for other gems as it deteriorates their bodies. Because of this, Cinnabar banishes themselves to night duty so they won't be in the way of the other gems. Foss wants to find a new job for Cinnabar, a job where she won't be isolated from everyone else. And that is the beginning of this magical tale. Foss spends her days searching for new things to put in the encyclopedia and tries to find a better job for Cinnabar. But as the narrative moves more and more, strange things start to happen. And firstly, the way time moves within the manga itself starts great an off-putting feeling. There are many times in the manga where you feel you're in the middle of one scene only for the next page to cut to a different location. Sometimes the conversation carries over and other times it doesn't, but it creates this distorted view of how time would normally move within a manga. Even though the images we read are printed onto a page, the order of them creates a simulation to something that resembles different scenes out of a movie. And the closest thing that I feel when reading much of this story is to how the editing swims around near the end of Satoshi Kon's Perfect Blue. In Land of the Lustrous, our understanding of how time passes is skewed by the constant cutting of locations. And the reason for this technique couldn't be more clear. These characters are essentially immortal, so by blurring how we engage with time while reading, the audience can understand how memories may feel to these characters. And if that were the only effect of this technique for the story, it would be praiseworthy, but I think it even goes a step further. I have mentioned many of the mysteries that are present throughout this story, and the way the author cuts around time only adds to the mystery that needs to be solved. The author never lets us fully come to terms with how long we will be placed in any given scene. We are not on solid footing as a reader and she uses that to enhance the tension and intrigue of every single mystery throughout the story. This resulted in one of the most unique manga reading experiences I have ever had. For the beginning of this story, I was confused about what's going on. And then around chapter 15, I all of a sudden became fully invested in the plot and was at the mercy to the flow of the story. That flow leading us to these characters reaching their eventual breakpoint. 
This series ends up taking a notably dark turn as our characters are put into more and more mind-fucking situations. The reveal for many of these mysteries in the series are truly surprising and satisfying, but above all else, the story has a fascinating dialogue within itself about the nature of humans. There is a laundry list of different ideas that are explored throughout this series. Buddhism has been cited by Haruku Ikikawa as an important element to the series, but I think how it understands trauma is just as important to understanding what this series can be about. Each of these characters seemingly fit into a very specific and rigid category categories that we often box ourselves into, I must be this or I must be that. And trauma can often surface when there is a disconnect in who we think we are and who we truly are, and that is what we see through these characters. However, even when this comes about in the series, they always piece themselves together and continue forward. One of the more intriguing dialogues is this conflict between going after more knowledge or not. Knowledge is heralded as a good thing. We always want to learn more and praise the people who do so. But on the other hand, ignorance is bliss. The more these characters learn, the greater the tragedy they are forced to go through, with many of them breaking along the way. A stark line is drawn through the series about if you should want to pursue knowledge further, or continue living a happy life surrounded by lies. The answer to this question is still very much up for debate, but what the series does so well is give us some solutions or a thread to both sides being right, and that is what causes so much of the drama later in the series, as no matter what side these characters are still on, they get back up and move forward. I am simultaneously in one of the most exciting and challenging times in my life. Recently, I graduated from university, and while I now have a whole life in front of me, I have struggled to determine what I should do next, and equally struggled in finding work in a post-schooling world. Because of this, the output for these videos has dropped significantly, even though it is the one thing that I wish I could do above all else. And I think that is why Land of the Lustrous resonated with me so much. Even outside of the beautiful artwork, well-crafted characters, really unbelievable world-building, and the profound ideas it presents, all of these characters constantly break and put themselves back together. And so even when I'm struggling to find my own footing, I know that I just need to keep putting myself out there, keep putting myself back together. And I really think that is something we can all take away from this wonderful series. <laughs>